Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 15th of December and even more Christmassy. As always, we have the chapters, so you can jump to any particular update you care about the most. New videos this week. This video is a culmination of months of planning, and it was about using your data with generative AI, so a large language model. And the actual technology, as you'll see in the video, you can set up in 10 minutes. It was more about getting the actual data that I wanted to use in a suitable format so I could make it a bit more applicable to create a John Bot 4000. Sweet. Anyway, on to what's new on the compute side. So the Intel TXD confidential VMs are now in preview. So this is the trust domain extensions. This is different from the software guard extensions where it's a secure enclave, but I have to write my application to leverage it. So it's changes to the application. This instead is whole VM encryption. So there's no change required to my application, the operating system. It's transparent, but it's given me that confidentiality. And I can create these from the portal, from CLI, from PowerShell. It's the DC ESV5 and then the ECESV5 SKUs with the optional little D to give a temporary disk if you want it. So those are now in preview. On the networking side, I talked about this in a previous update. So this was the Azure front door domain fronting was gonna be blocked. It's been delayed to the 22nd of January, 2024. And the whole point of the domain fronting is when I'm talking to a site, I can put one name in the host header, then a different name in the TLS, the SSL, um, server name indication field. And what that could let me do is essentially bypass certain protections that may be in place by hiding the domain I actually want to talk to and putting a different one in that SNI when I'm negotiating the TLS connection. And so they were gonna block that behavior unless the two domains were part of the same subscription. They're just delaying that to give you a bit more time to update things uh, to get that ready. On the database side, so the Oracle database at Azure is now GA. Now when I say GA, it's GA in East US. So it's in one region today, there are more regions coming. Remember, this is all about the Oracle Cloud infrastructure, the OCI available in Azure data centers. So it's a huge partnership between Oracle and Azure. The management, I buy it as a marketplace offering, is still very much partnered with Oracle, but the exadata-based clusters sit in the Azure data centers. And I can then put things like Oracle Rack on top of that. And the benefit to you is now those applications that are running in Azure have a super low latency because I have a very close distance. So I can now be using something like Oracle Rack for my database and then use AKS or app services or whatever I want in Azure and I get a super low latency because they're co-located. On the miscellaneous, so Event Grid, remember we talk about Event Grid a lot. It's that service that essentially can hook into event generating sources and then call an event handler an Azure function, a webhook, it saves that end service having to hammer pole. Do you have something? Do you have something? Do you have something? And so now there's additional service interactions thanks to it hooking into Microsoft Graph. If you think of Microsoft Graph hooks into so many different things, uh, Entra, Office solutions like SharePoint and Outlook. Well now because this is hooking into the Microsoft Graph API, those services I can now leverage as part of an event generating um, source. So I think Outlook, Teams, OneDrive, SharePoint, Entra ID, they can all be now leveraged by an event handler using Event Grid. So that, that's super cool to get notified of those things. Microsoft Entra Internet Access has gone public preview. Now, I talked about this many months ago. I did a video on Entra um, Secure Services Edge, SSE, and I kind of mentioned it, but I wasn't allowed to show it in any detail. Now it's gone public preview. I'll do a video this weekend going into it, but it's a, a super cool technology and it's, it's actually really easy to leverage. So I'll go into that, but it's all about now securing those internet sites, those non-federated applications with Entra, 
and still applying the security and protecting our users from accidentally going to some bad site, I can do all of that with this solution. Of course, it's kind of partners with the Microsoft Entra private access that lets me get seamless access to resources on private networks. And it's the same client. So I'll, I'll probably do a deeper video on that as well. But public preview, you can go and play with it. Azure App Configuration now has snapshots in GA. So App Configuration, remember, is all about that centralized repository for my key value pairs that define the settings for applications. So I have a central point to define all of those. And if I think of a snapshot, it's an immutable copy of the key values I want based on filters at a certain point in time. Once I create the snapshot, it's immutable. I can't change it. So it's really good to be able to go back in time maybe and see what those settings were for audit purposes. Maybe I want to safeguard and protect it from unintended changes. Um, rollback even. I can go back to a point in time if something happens. So now I can leverage those snapshots. And finally, from an ITSM perspective, ServiceNow, the Vancouver version, they do their new versions based on cities, etc. So the Vancouver version is now supported with the ITSM connectors uh, in preview. So that would enable me to, for example, use it as part of an action group. If something happens, go and create a ticket. Um, now in the ServiceNow Vancouver version. So there's a quick update this week. As always, I hope that was useful. Until the next video, take care.